Texas Republicans this week joined a growing number of state legislators around the country who are moving forward with measures to restrict voting access in the name of what they say is election security. The two dozen bills introduced in Texas would do things like limit early voting, limit a county's ability to expand voting hours, make it harder to get uh, absentee and return uh, ballots, get those ballots returned. Critics say this all amounts to a kind of voter suppression. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has declared election security, as he calls it, an emergency legislative item. Doesn't matter what party you're in, and doesn't matter your party affiliation, what matters is our collective effort to agree and then to achieve the goal of ensuring that we promote integrity in the election process and that achieves our goal of instilling trust and confidence in elections. Now joining us now to discuss, Jerry Herbert from the Campaign Legal Center and ABC News contributor Leah wright Rigur. So Leah, let me begin with you. This, this seems to me like a solution in search of a problem that provably does not exist, right? The Republicans have had commissions, the President Trump had a commission, there have been all kinds of commissions looking for voter fraud for desperate uh, problems in, in the security of elections, and it's not out there. Governor says it doesn't matter what party you're in, you should be, uh, co this should be a collective effort. Why are we seeing this? So here's the thing. There is a problem that Republicans have identified, and that problem is democracy, and that problem is voters. So what other, what best way to get rid of the problem than to institute all kinds of reforms around voting that restricts access to the polls? So this isn't about expanding democracy. It's certainly not about election security. We're actually coming out of the most secure election that we have ever experienced in this country because of those calls for so-called election security. But instead, what we are seeing is an attempt, really, to restrict the voting rights and restrict the democratic rights of people in this country, particularly from a specific subset of the population. This is not a new problem. This is not a new solution that Republicans have proposed. But instead, it's a very old, old solution, and it's a very old approach that they've taken, in part because it is getting more and more difficult to win elections primarily with just the Republican base. So the best way to restrict that is to restrict the voting rights of these people in question. And that is a telling argument. And, and Jerry, the argument we're hearing from state lawmakers who are pushing these laws is that people have lost confidence in the election system. So is that accurate? Have they? No, I think that's really a fig leaf argument to hide the vote suppression efforts that these bills aim at. You know, take absentee voting, which many people utilize um, in, in many states. You don't even have to have an excuse. And they're trying to eliminate that and actually threatening prosecuting people who can't really prove that they were either ill or absent on election day. There's, a, there's no lack of confidence in the elections. There's a lack of confidence in the Republicans' ability to win elections unless they suppress the vote. Uh, it, is, it is an old saying, facts don't care about your, your feelings. And the, the feeling that the Republicans say they have about a lack of confidence is, is just refuted by the facts. And so, Leah, we're talking about similar bills in 43 states now. What kind of impact could these measures have? Well, I think one of the big things that we have to consider is that the protection, the full protection of the Voting Rights Act is no longer there. That disappeared a couple of years ago with that landmark Supreme Court decision. And in fact, the 2016 election and then subsequent 2020 election and these little elections along the way, midterm elections, off-year elections, have all taken place without the full protection of the Voting Rights Act. And so what we're seeing across the country is really the consequence of the lack of enforcement and protection of the full body of the Voting Rights Act. So it does have right, the possibility of really restricting the voting rights of millions, potentially hundreds of millions of Americans in this country. We may, in fact, see, I think, uh, a scaling back on uh, uh, these democratic access, uh, access points. You know, in 2020, one of the remarkable things about the 2020 election is just how many people participated when we gave them the democratic tools to participate. And now when we see these laws coming into place, that will directly affect that. So we may see a, a, a very sharp shrinking of the democratic voting base across this country. And so part of what we should be looking at is, do we need federal intervention? in terms of voting rights. Do we need a new Voting Rights Act, which is being debated right now in Congress, 
or do we need state legislators, governors, things of that nature to be brave and introduce voting rights for expanded voting rights for, for, for more of the population in order to combat these efforts? Well, let me bring that to Jerry. Is, is federal action really uh, the solution here for people concerned about these laws, which would, as Leah says, you know, probably shrink the number of voters in, in our democracy? What would that look like? Well, as Leah has pointed out, the Supreme Court in 2013 neutered a very important part of the Voting Rights Act uh, in Shelby County versus Holder. And as a result of that decision, many of the vote suppression laws that you just referenced would be uh, examined and often blocked by the Voting Rights Act provision that was struck down by the Supreme Court. There is an effort in Congress right now, a bill, uh, H.R. 4, uh, the John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Act, and it uh, will uh, protect against these kinds of measures. Um, and in addition, the Department of Justice has broad law enforcement authority under the Voting Rights Act and can take action also, uh, but that requires, of course, going to court. Um, which can often take uh, more time uh, to get these laws enjoined. Yeah, as somebody who's looked at this for so long, uh, Jerry, are there are there reforms uh, that could be made to, to to make this process smoother? I've covered elections in other countries. No one quite does it like the United States. Uh, is there are there reforms that that, that you think are needed for uh, for the elections? There are, and actually the House has already passed uh, H.R. 1, and it's now S. 1 over in the Senate, and hopefully the Senate will enact it too. That has a lot of reforms that would help. Automatic voter registration, for example. That's really important. You know, in our country, um, each state has different requirements. Um, we don't, uh, we gerrymander districts uh, in our democracy to the point where politicians get to choose their voters instead of the other way around. H.R. 1 deals with that by creating independent commissions to oversee uh, redistricting of congressional districts. So, yes, there are a lot of reforms, and some of them actually in the John Lewis Voting Rights Act uh, that is yet to be uh, passed. But um, I expect uh, we'll see more of that this fall. And it has a preclearance provision like the one that similar, but, uh, but different because it reflects current conditions um, and will block uh, voting discrimination and stop it in its tracks. All right, Jerry Herbert, Leo Edward thanks very much on this important issue. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.